road here, I've been out grunted by a super dupe. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to a new video. And today I'm out on Carol's Street Triple. Hello docs. Just had a lovely coffee at Sutton Wharf here. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Now the reason I'm on this bike today is because I've uh, chucked it in the back of my van to go and take my van for a service and it's the lightest bike to uh, get in and out the back of the van if I'm totally honest it's also a good reason to get a ride out on it and uh, just give you an update on how well we're getting on with the street triple <laughs> Amazing. Now I'm a I'm a big guy. I'm uh, six foot four and uh, about 19 stone. Unfortunately, uh, whatever that works out to in uh, kilograms. Heavy, fat, really. So I'm a bit of a squeeze on this bike, if I'm honest. But I can get on it. It's not. It's not really uncomfortable, and if, probably if you're a bit lighter, you might uh, you might enjoy the bike more, even at my height. In reality, it does suit the shorter rider more. That's why you see lots of women riding these bikes, and it's the reason my wife rides it. My wife is five foot seven, and uh, you'll see uh, see her in lots of the videos that we do, lots of the touring videos we do. And she can uh, flat foot this bike at five foot seven. Just makes it comfortable turning round in car parks and, and stuff like that. Ever since Carol did a test way back in 2011, 2012, she'd ridden a street triple. She had a, a, a purple street triple. Uh, with a uh, high up rear exhaust uh, but the only problem as much as she loved that bike the only problem with that was it hadn't got ABS brakes and uh, personally for a new rider I think ABS is quite important so uh, when this model came out we decided to uh, upgrade it although she uh, she doesn't really uh, like the colour as much as her old purple one Fabulous quick shifter on it. Now Carol's had this bike about six and a half years now and it's clocked up very nearly 30,000 miles. In fact it might roll over the 30,000 miles on this uh, on this ride today. Here, I've been out grunted by a super dupe. Wouldn't have done that if I had my MT10. Tell you what, I think I better uh, pull up to actually uh, tell you a bit more about this bike. Riding and talking it takes a lot of uh, concentration. Field full of wheat just starting to ripen. Get rid of the fly. So, guys, six and a half years old, 30,000 miles. Certainly doesn't look immaculate, 
but it's still in excellent condition. So, in all that time, has she had any bother with this bike? And the answer is no, apart from one item. Do I show you? That little thing tucked in there that you uh, may have heard in action earlier. I think we'd had the bike probably 18 months, something like that. We're in the middle of France and it suddenly stopped working. You can obviously change gear normally, but the quick shift part of it stopped working. And uh, uh, when we got back, we took it back to Pigcocks, who originally supplied us. And uh, over the last decade, we've probably had, that was the fourth bike we had from Pigcocks. And uh, they said it wasn't covered under warranty because they fitted it for us when we bought the bike. And that item, because it was retrofitted, wasn't covered by the same warranty as the bike was covered on, which is a load of BS for me. Unfortunately, Pigcocks charged us 80 quid to try and fix it, which they didn't do. And then they said, oh, it needs a new one. We want to charge a full price. I think it was another 200 quid uh, on top. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't knock any of that uh, uh, 80 quid charge off. So uh, that was the, the end of a good relationship up till that point with uh, Pigcocks at Nottingham. You know, we decided to try and find... Uh, another dealer to look after the bike and that's where we came across Sutton's and so far Sutton's have been great on the service side. Sutton's fitted as the the new quick shifter cheaper than what uh, Pickcocks had quoted as. Triumph, they do make some good bikes but sometimes the, the, the dealerships let them down, they really do. I mean we, we had a really good relationship for with Pickcocks for years and they used to have a a crumbly old shop and then they built this uh, smashing sort of glass fronted affair and uh, it never seemed to be the same again it was all about image and not service if you ride one up why do you really need a bigger bike i mean carol uses this to go everywhere on it's been across europe it's been to the alps been down to southern spain Lots and lots of places. I mean, there's a. I'll show you the few modifications that uh, uh, we've had done to it. Obviously, it's got the SW Motec rack here, and uh, that's carried a lot of stuff. But we did have a failure probably about three years ago with the original SW Motec rack. It hadn't been welded in a couple of key areas where that comes up there and it fractured and snapped off in the middle of Scotland. There is a video up there which I'll uh, I'll link in the comments section about how we got around that but uh, they sent us a new one out and uh, the new uprated one and uh, seems to be good. So uh, yeah Carol likes having a, she calls it a boot, she enjoys having that on there. And when we're doing the bigger trips We've got the uh, SW Motec Blaze Panniers, which has this bracket affair fixed on to the rear foot peg hanger. Now, the only thing you need to be aware of here is that bar that goes across under there uh, catches the hugger if you have the suspension on the, uh, on the lightest settings. Now, you're going to say, what, what is that? What is that? That horrendous looking thing stops Carol from getting muddy. The very first time she picked this up from Pigcocks, rode it home, the roads were wet and muddy. And she ended up with a uh, line of mud all the way up over her back, over her helmet. She was not happy. Because the previous street trip she had had got the hype exhaust up here and that caught a lot of the crud that got thrown up by uh, this model and she wasn't prepared for that and uh, scoured the internet and apparently this is or was a fitment in some Asian countries 
She's got an SW Motec tank bag. She's got the uh, Garmin 660 sat nav, which bolts onto the top yoke there. That's a Triumph item. And heated grips, and that's the mods. There's no performance mods. Uh, we've kept the bike standard, still got the standard exhaust. She loves riding the bike, really comfortable on it. And she just wants to keep running it. She has no yearning for any new motorcycle. So uh, maintenance wise, it's had quite a few sets of tyres on, brakes obviously. It's going in this week for uh, its second chain and sprocket kit. She's currently running the Michelin Road 6s and uh, riding it today. They feel very impressive, very confidence inspiring, and she's ridden it in the wet. She feels really happy with the way the bike performs in the wet. Doesn't move around. Just It just does what you want it to do. There's nothing worse than having tyres you don't feel confident in, is there? Riding it steady, even though it's got a 17 litre tank, the same as my MT-10, it'll do about 160 miles to a tank, probably even 170, whereas I'm out at 100 to 110. So way more economic engine, and it's more economical than the uh, previous gen that she had. Definitely more economical than the previous purple one that she had. The only other non-standard item on this is it's one tooth down on the chain and sprocket, so one one tooth smaller on the front sprocket because when we bought it, she really wasn't happy with how tall the first gear was. It just made manoeuvre, slow manoeuvring, going around hairpin bends on some of the tours more difficult. And it was definitely longer geared compared to the previous model. So taking it down one, gear, one tooth at the front takes it back more to what the previous model was. All in all, we're really, really pleased with this bike. Don't see it going anywhere unless, you know, it has a major breakdown or should the worst happen to it, it get damaged or stolen. I think it's a, it's a long-term keeper for Carol. I was watching a video by the Gorilla Biker extolling the virtues of older bikes. And uh, there's a lot to be said about an older bike. I think all the electronic stuff that they're chucking at these bikes now, it's just, it's just over the top. You don't need it. We like keys. Just a, a key triumph. Why not give us a key? All the modern ones now, all keyless. And I don't see the point. I don't see what it gives you. And if, like me, you've had keyless and been stranded in the middle of nowhere when your bike doesn't recognise your key fob, you'll be less keen on having the modern tech. It's the same with all the, the huge array of riding modes, corner sensitive, this and... All those electronic things only make a difference to, to you if you ride in the bike on the edge of its performance. Just normal road riding, you don't need it. I mean, you don't really need ABS. I just think it's an electronic item that's probably worth having. But every time they add another layer of complexity, I just it just puts me off. I want the other niggle for me. I don't like these mirrors. If you're really tall like me, you press them to the top of their adjustment and they're still too low. They actually don't adjust enough to get them high enough. I'd probably have to slack them off on the bars and actually tilt the, uh, the brake lever and the clutch lever levers down to get the mirrors up higher. And uh, you go fast enough, it actually moves around, which is slightly annoying as well. Just a great sounding bike and it still sounds as good as the day it rolled out the showroom. Well, we can't get this wing. For some reason. We go through a Clifton Campville. Gravel, gravel. 
I think as this bike's got older, the gearbox has got even more super slick. I think it's lighter and easier to use even than the uh, the gearbox on my uh, Yamaha Yamaha M210. have got that induction sound down to a down to a T. Let's see if we can uh, find a spot to just open it up. That noise there. Oh, brilliant. Oh, look at that beautiful church. Stone spire. This is Lullington. And what do you think of that, guys? Beautiful. Yeah, red phone box. Contains a defibrillator now. It's Instead of the phone, and it's a uh, library. Anyway, guys, time to head back and uh, get something useful done at home while uh, while I wait for my van to get serviced. Thank you very much for watching this little uh, street triple update, and uh, all I'll say is street triples rock they really do they are cracking little bikes and look after them super reliable as well thanks a lot for watching catch you on the next one bye 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 bye